And hello everyone and welcome to Victory Update for Tuesday, July 28th. Thank you for watching us here on the Victory Channel or on the Victory Channel Facebook page or the KCM Facebook page. Wherever you are watching, we are glad you're here. And listen, did you know that you were created by a winner to be a winner? And any thought or message contrary to that just is not true. You are a winner. You're created to be a winner. And hopefully, after this next half hour, you will know more about why you are a winner because we're going to share some things in the next half hour that we hope will encourage you. Speaking of encouraging, uh, my co-host today is a guy that you can't be in the room with more than about 20 seconds and not be encouraged. I'm with... Kirk Shellstrom. How are you, my friend? Hey, how are you? I'm good. What you? Yeah, hey, I'm jumping on Facebook, seeing all of our friends on Facebook this afternoon, and people are jumping on from all over, and we're ready to go. Yeah, we are ready. This is Mr. Social Media here at KCM, by the way. This, all the social media that you see, a lot of it comes through him. In fact, you want to go to our Instagram page and just look up Copeland Network and see some of the posts over the last couple of days, some of the sound bites from some of our speakers that are coming up for Southwest. You are going to love what you see on social media. And Kurt, we also have something we want to give to the, or not give, offer to the viewers tonight. Absolutely. Uh, Sister Gloria, spiritual antioxidants. You know, we need antioxidants for our physical body, but we need those for our spiritual body as well. And you can get this. We're going to $30. Uh, this week is for 12 The fruit of the spirit is love. And boy, Tim, we... We need some love. Yes, we do. And so if you want to get this, it's a six CD series by Sister Gloria. Simply go to govictory.com forward slash victory update and get yours today. And again, regularly $30 and this week it's 12 bucks. Absolutely. Make sure you take advantage of that. And here at KCM, we love you and we love to pray for you. Uh, we are with also Quest Gatlin today. He is at our partner service center where all of our prayer ministers are right now. Quest. Hey guys, good to be with you. Listen, I, 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 Tim, Kurt, I've got to, right out the <laughs> gate, man. I got, I got to kick this off with what Jeremy Pearson's often calls a glory story. So I'm going to call it that. We got some testimonies or glory stories that came in uh, today. I want to read some of these uh, with you. And of course, I'm at the Partner Service Center. For those of you watching and you didn't know, every morning we have a, a program that I want to encourage you to jump on and watch with us, engage with us on Facebook and Instagram, of course, at the Copeland Network, but as well as the Victory Channel. Uh, Listen, we're praying for you. Brother Copeland had committed. Listen, you will never be without prayer. And so yield to it and, uh, and, and avail yourself to the fact that there are people, and I'm here behind me, are actual licensed ministers who will agree with you concerning anything uh, with the spirit of faith. And so here's what I want to do. I want to read a couple of these uh, to you. Joanne called in out of the city of Seymour uh, with a praise report. She had called in for prayer concerning restoration of her eyesight. And when somebody had agreed with her over the phone with a spirit of faith, come on, I, I'm just being honest. It wasn't just like, oh, you know, we're going to agree with you. No, no. I mean, a, a conquering spirit, a spirit of victory, a spirit of faith. She began to see a difference in her eyesight, a remarkable difference almost immediately. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. <laughs> hey, Helen called in as well uh, with a prayer request for continued increase in finances. And of course, Helen and many of the others who are watching, we are in full agreement with you over that. She's a tither. And listen, there's always something connected to a tither and a partner. Amen. Biblically. Amen. But she prayed with us last week for a place to stay and her pastor and his wife blessed them with a hotel for a week while they continue to get things situated. Listen, I'm, I'm seeing God move in <laughs> profound ways with our partners and Amen. our victory Amen. viewers. And so I just want to encourage all of our viewers joining us now. L listen, we're here to agree with you in prayer. Pick up the phone. Give us a call at 877-281-6297. Of course, you could also go to kcm.org slash prayer. The information will be right there at the bottom of your screen. But listen, Tim, there's so many great things going on around here. Prayer is one of them. Absolutely. But on top of prayer, just some amazing testimonies are, are beginning to flow in. Praise God. You're right, Quest. And while I've got you here, you mentioned moving of God, the move of God. We are just days, just days Come away. On from the Southwest Believers right. Convention. And the part yeah. of that meeting that you are really heavily involved in is 1440. That's and right. I know 
that you're expecting a move of God oh, in on. those services, aren't you? Uh, not only are we expecting <laughs> it, I demand a move of God. The, I, I'm telling you, we're putting a demand Amen. on the Holy Spirit this year, but we're so excited to see. We have hundreds, listen to me now, hundreds of teenagers that are already yeah. registering to be a part of what God is going to do at Southwest Believers Convention this year. This is a significant year. This is a Holy Ghost. Come on, a year of miracle working power. And the last couple of years, man, we've seen razors left at the altar call. We've seen nine, I'm talking, they were planning on doing something yeah. with some of these things. We, we've seen the most amazing testimonies of moves of God in this next generation. And I'm so excited. We're literally days away from seeing what God is going to do this year at Southwest Believers Convention. But listen, I could sit here and talk to you about it all day long. I want our viewers to check out this promo. Don't go away. already tell some of you are going, where are my car keys? Where's the airplane? I got to get down there and get in that. And you do. 500 people have already I just, I just got the numbers in. 500 kids for ages 13 through 18 have already pre-registered for this event. Uh, and looking at the numbers, 4,516 people have pre-registered for Southwest this year. Okay. The general manager from the Omni Hotel called me and said, hey, what's going on? Their numbers are now over 400 hotel rooms, Tim, have been booked <laughs> for people coming in for this event. Yeah. We are about to have Let's church and we are excited. <laughs> we are excited. And we're going to get into more of that here in just a few minutes, but let's take our news break now with Mike Garofalo. And Mike, I understand that there's a group that is speaking out now on behalf of the unborn. That's right, Tim. And it appears to be a well thought out idea with Black Lives Matter murals painted in front of Trump Tower in New York City and just down the street from the White House. Another mural is getting some attention. Over the weekend, a Baby Lives Matter mural was painted in front of the Planned Parenthood Clinic in Washington, D.C. The Baby Lives Matter movement led by Taylor Hansen is responsible. One of Hansen's tweets says 10 unarmed black Americans were killed by police in 2019. They have murals all around the country. Almost 400,000 innocent babies were murdered by Planned Parenthood in 2019. It's about time they get a mural too. According to the Western Journal, Hansen has launched a GoFundMe page to support his effort. He says he will use the money to pay for 10 more Baby Lives Matter murals around the country. A disturbing Supreme Court decision regarding church attendance in Nevada. On Friday, the high court denied an appeal by a Nevada church to allow worshipers to attend in-person services based on a facility's capacity. The state has placed a blanket 50-person limit for all places of worship due to the coronavirus pandemic, no matter the seating capacity. Meantime, casinos, restaurants, and movie theaters in Nevada are allowed up to 50% capacity. Efforts to make it easier to vote by mail are being backed by well-funded, often anonymous donors. An Associated Press report says more than $100 million is being used to support the vote by mail campaign. Now, according to the report, cash-strapped cities in Wisconsin have received $6.3 million from an organization associated with left-wing philanthropy. In the meantime, a well-funded conservative group is reportedly fighting cases connected to procedures associated with mail-in ballots. In a clearly political move, Democrat mayors in six U.S. cities have called on Congress to stop the president from deploying federal officers to their cities in an effort to stop the violence. The mayors of Portland, Chicago, Seattle, Albuquerque, Kansas City, and Washington, D.C. are calling the efforts by federal officers to protect the property and people of their cities both unlawful and repugnant. The mayors claim the deployment has escalated tensions among protesters who started in the name of George Floyd, but now clearly have their own agenda. At the same time the request was made, authorities announced their arrest of 22 people on charges for their actions during clashes with federal and local police at the U.S. courthouse in Portland. And in Seattle on Saturday night, police arrested 45 people there after declaring the protest had turned into a riot.
The protest that broke out after the death of George Floyd have resulted in close to $1 million in damage to 303 New York City police vehicles. On Monday, the department said 14 cars were a total loss due to fire damage, while seven are being repaired and others are already back on the streets. The latest damage happened Saturday night with video capturing one man using a protest sign to break the window of an unoccupied police van. That same night, another police vehicle had graffiti sprayed on it. Just last week, police cleared the encampment from the front of City Hall. It had been there close to a month. As for violence in the city, shootings are reportedly up 220% for the week, ending July 19th compared to one year ago. A new report is calling out an FDA delay for costing thousands of American lives. According to a report in World Net Daily, if the FDA had given the OK for the emergency approval for the outpatient use of hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19, as many as 16,000 coronavirus victims would still be alive today. The report says that on July 1st, doctors at the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit filed an urgent request to the FDA for approval of hydroxychloroquine to be used in an early treatment for COVID-19. A clinical trial at the hospital found a 51% reduction of fatalities if hydroxychloroquine was given within 24 hours of a hospital admission. Another study mentioned in the report found that if hydroxychloroquine was given along with azithromycin and zinc within seven days of COVID-19 symptoms, there were close to 80% less deaths. As many U.S. businesses uh, attempt to move back toward what we once considered normal, some are deciding to continue allowing employees to work from home. On Monday, Google said due to the coronavirus, the work from home order is being extended to next summer. The move, the first by a major U.S. company, will impact close to 200,000 employees. Apple, Amazon, and Facebook are all expected to continue working from home at least through the end of the year. The Trump administration is calling on the FCC to regulate social media. On Monday, the Commerce Department formally sent a petition to the Federal Communications Commission asking it to reinterpret the 1996 act that gives online companies like Twitter and Facebook immunity from legal liability for the actions of their users. The petition states that large online platforms are engaging in selective censorship, and that censorship is harming our national discourse. The move is a direct result of an executive order the president signed in May asking the FCC to reinterpret the law due to social media companies, social media giants, apparent unchecked power. That unchecked power was used by Twitter to flag two of the president's tweets that talked about mail-in voting. Twitter called them potentially misleading. No more war. That appears to be what North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is saying, and he's thanking his nuclear arsenal for that. Kim reportedly made the comments at a reception marking the 67th anniversary of the end of the Korean War. Kim called the country's nuclear weapons a self-defensive deterrent that will ensure his country's safety. Back to you in the Victory Studio. <clears throat> All right, Mike, thank you very much. Remember, everybody, continue to pray and get involved. Do your part, pray and vote in November. It's a very important thing. Now, I tell you, before we get went to that news break, we were talking about Southwest, and I do want to get this in before we get a little bit further on. You were down there today I was. at the uh, Fort Worth Convention Center. Tell yeah. me what happened today. Well, you know, today we were just marking the floors for all of our rigging points and that, but talking to the union guys that were there, the venue guys, they've been off for 10 weeks, weeks. Tim, and yeah. this is their first day back to work because we're doing this event. Yeah. And so th that's just uh, six, six people that were there today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we'll be up to 40, uh, Thursday up to 80, and it'll be close to 100 on Friday. Friday. And, you know, the volunteers that are coming in, the people, but we are literally bringing a charge and a surge yeah. back to the city of Fort Worth. That's and we're great. excited about it. I'm telling you, we're bringing the word of God. And as Kurt said, it is a charge to this city. Now, let's take a minute for our news break. And then on the, uh, our, well, our praise break, news break, praise break. Hey, they both, you can praise them during both. So let's take a praise break. <laughs> and we'll have Michael Howell, Jacob Smith, and David Ellis sing for us. On the other side of this, we're going to have some more information for you. So let, let the redeemed of the Lord say so.
redeemed of the Lord, say so. Sing of his promises. Michael, thank you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Boy, that's true. You know, outreach is a really big part of what we do here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And Brian Sanders is the outreach pastor here on staff at Eagle Mountain Church and has acquainted with KCM since 1973. Originally from Spokane, Washington, he was raised in South Dakota, got to Texas as soon as he could. Uh, he's no stranger to ministry. He spent 16 years as the ministry director for Mike Barber Ministries, and he's also faithfully served in Super Kid Academy here, where he is better known as Captain B. Brian is excited to see our church mobilized to fulfill Matthew 28, 19, which says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And Brian, outreach and evangelism should be the cornerstone of pretty much any ministry or church, It shouldn't it? Absolutely, because when you look at uh, Matthew 28, the first part of that, it says go, and that's a verb. I mean, that's action. And that's what we're called to do. In fact, when you look at some of the things the Lord told us, that is one of the last things He told us to do is go make disciples of all men. Yeah, yeah. And you've done this for a long time. We have. And in fact, really, I, you know, when we started looking at outreach, one day I was sitting in a church and I heard Pastor George says, I need some men to go help uh, Pastor uh, uh, Mike Barber Ministries because Brother Copeland was there. And that's how I got started. Uh, yeah. we, we've been doing that for a long time, but then it, it merged into uh, where we're at today. Yeah. Now, outreach goes on here at KCM and MIC every single day, but it really is ramped up next week. And I want to show you real quick uh, something from last year's convention concerning outreach and evangelism uh, that I think will bless you. So take a look at this. How do people recognize us? I want them to recognize me as a man who's been with Jesus. He wants his people whole. He wants his family back. When I say what he tells me to say, people are going to get saved. People are going to get healed. People are going to get set free. They're going to get delivered. We've had our evangelism team out sharing with the people coming to the meeting. Sometimes we make it too complicated, but once it just gets down to the very basics, it allows it to be comfortable and to the presentation of what God has for them. Romans 3 says, all of us have sinned. Romans 6 says this, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 10, 13 says this, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. And he rose again. He rose again. I give you my life. I give you my life. I want Jesus Christ. Oh, that Jesus Christ. To come into my heart. Come into my heart. And into my life. And come into my life. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, Earl. Welcome to the family. This is prophetic evangelism. 
because I'm hearing from the Heavenly Father. If he has a word for someone, I'm going to give them that word. Welcome to the family indeed. And that's one thing we always love to say around here once we get people born again and into the kingdom of God is welcome to the family. And Brian, you were telling me while that was rolling that evangelism and outreach is really part of the DNA of Kenneth Copeland Ministry. It goes way back. Yes, it does. In fact, uh, when Brother Jerry uh, Savelle hooked up with Brother Copeland, and that's years ago, um, and one of the things he did during the meetings is he went out on the streets, on the beaches, and he shared Jesus, and hundreds came to the Lord. And even today, uh, every Southwest, we have hundreds that come to the Lord every time. Yeah. And so part of what we do at Southwest, and really with our partners, what we want to do is we want them to learn how to evangelize, to share their faith. And basically why people don't share their faith, I, I say there's three. First of all, it's fear. Uh, it's the number one thing. Yeah. People are fearful of sharing their faith. Uh, the second one is, is they don't know how. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the techniques. They don't uh, know the process or the, or the method. And then the last one is being willing to go. Yeah. Um, and, and really, when you look at, in fact, uh, KCBC, we teach this course to our uh, students, and we actually use that book as our curriculum. Wow. Wow. And so when you hear Brother Copeland, he says, there's two great evangelists I know, and that's Jerry Savelle and Riley Stevenson. Yeah. He's part of this team. Uh, he, he, he's evangelist uh, all the way through him. In fact, if you first knew Riley, when he first came to this church, right. he was like a church mouse. Right. But then he got a hold of the Word of God. Right. He got the Word, started getting out in the yeah. streets. And then uh, you look at him today. So uh, you can take a person like Riley. Anyone can do it. Sometimes they look yeah. at us and they say, oh, you're a pastor. Right. You're an evangelist. No, we all started this, but we use the Word of God, and it's what the Word of God right. that makes the difference. In fact, one of the things, and I'll just take a second and teach you some simple processes that we do. When we come up to a person, we just small talk for a little bit, and then afterwards, I'll just say, hey, you know, I just have it on my heart that I need to pray for you. And then I say, how can I pray for you? Notice how I said that. Yeah. I didn't say, can I pray right. for you? Because that's a how yes or no. Yeah. But how can? And I get quiet. If they don't respond, I'm saying, sure, there's something going on in your life right. that we can pray for you. And then they answer yes. So we pray about that. And then we ask another simple question. And it's like this. Tim, if you were to die today, where would you go? Heaven or hell? We get quiet again. Yeah. And realize that they are... Uh, it's ministering to the spirit. We're right. talking to the spirit person. And if they say anything but yes, Jesus is Lord of my life, we simply go to the Word of God. It's because the Word that changes every yeah. time. And it's as simple as that. Right. You can take whatever scripture. In fact, people ask me all the time, what's the best way to witness? And I say, be led by the Holy yeah. Spirit. Follow the Holy Spirit. Right. But you know, sometimes you need, you know, like when you first start reading or right. riding a bike, you need training wheels. Yeah. And yeah. that's what these are. These They're are training. tools. In fact, we have these tools. If you can't attend Southwest, if you go to emic.org slash 316, all these are downloadable. Yeah. As a church, you can customize them to your church, yeah. put your address on them. It's all uh, tools that we help our partners learn how to. And I'm evangelize. glad you said that because uh, Southwest is our, you know, our big thing every year. We take teams out, like you said, and about, we got about a minute and a half left. Uh, the 316 ministry here at EMIC, that's, that is really what this is, right? This, the 316 is what we're going to be seeing next week. Absolutely. And it's really neat how this came about. Uh, one, one day I was just praying, I kept hearing 316. 316. And so I just thought, normally Saturday when we go out and evangelize, uh, but the Lord said, no, I want you to do an event on 316. So I looked at it in March 316, mm -hmm. and then the Lord just started downloading this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you look at uh, the passion translation of that verse, it says that, uh, you know, we know this John 316, for God so loved the world that he gave his only one and true unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience, that's it, experience everlasting life. And that's where that three, yeah. 316 experience yeah. came from, because yeah. we want people to experience God. Yeah. We want them to experience his love, his healing and his presence. And it's when we share our faith with people. And it's as simple as that, yeah. you know, uh, uh, 
<laughs> it's in, in fact one of the things that we say, and and afterwards we follow up with them. Yep. Uh, part of this is is the next steps, what to do with them. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, our discipleship, we get their name, we follow up with them. Yeah. But it's that experience. It's more than just you know that simple prayer, saying the word, but it's truly experiencing yeah. the love of God and Amen. what He has Amen. for you. I don't want to let time get away from us. I'll take about thirty seconds and lead the people into salvation. There may be people watching Absolutely. don't know how don't know Jesus. Absolutely. Lead them into salvation. So, 30 seconds. Listen, it's this simple. The word of God says that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. It's that simple. In fact, say this with me. Lord Jesus, Come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Yeah. In fact, if you did that today, call KCM. We want to hear from you. We want to actually send you some material and help you with your walk with the Lord. There is nothing greater than living a life with Him and experiencing the true life and presence of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. If you want more information, mic.org slash 316. You can find out about what goes on here and about how to get involved next week at the Southwest Believers Convention. Now listen, we've got a lot of things still going on here this week on the Victory Channel. The America Stand Special this Thursday night, July the 30th at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. You don't want to miss that. And then tomorrow night, you were saying Pastor Terry's got a, a prayer That's service? That's right. Tomorrow uh, at 7 p.m. Central Time, uh, Pastor Terry is leading a spirit-led prayer time uh, with the prayer team here at yep. EMIC KCM yep. and it's going to be live on Victory Channel so go. it's a place of home group right. we're going to awesome we're going to get after awesome it. tomorrow prayer. morning morning prayer 9:30 a.m. Eastern 8:30 a.m. Central and then tomorrow right back here at 5 p.m. Eastern 4 p.m. Central for Victory Update you don't want to miss that so until tomorrow remember remember this you're a winner you were created by a winner to be a winner and remember this God loves you we love you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Don't miss tomorrow, everybody. Be with Amen. us tomorrow morning.